Alrighty. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Once again, kind of in a slump. Kind of shat away a lot of the day, but I did get my dishes done. I do want to get a ramen done as well before we start streaming. Really got to get back on the ball. If if Lofi, future Lofi is watching this, hey, fucking get back on track, buddy. All right, so hey, this product that we're going to be trying here in our uh, ramen abyss. Did I did I mention that? Ramen abyss, everybody. Hello. This is the JML Artificial Stew Pork Flavor, and as you can see, this one was a gift from TNT Fox, right up there. I have to say thanks for this one as well. Been holding on to it for a while, quite a while, and, you know, <laughs> we're probably going to have to try to take that into consideration when we're doing our judging. But we have had a JML product in the recent past. I believe it was a spicy beef flavor, something like that. I found that it was derivative of another ramen that I I have like no more access to. I think somebody might have given me a, a link to where to get it, but that was a while back. And you know what, if I do, if I do find where to get that again, I might just try to snag it again for the sake of the show and for, for my own sake. Maybe I'll grab like a four pack and treasure it over, over the next couple of decades like I'm doing with these. Good Lord, how long have I had these? This artificial stew pork flavor, it, it's, it's represented fairly well on the packaging i mean if we're gonna start with the the packaging here i do kind of like what we don't got going on over here there is a picture and about 20 percent of that picture is you know kind of i mean there is some there is a lot hiding there under all this other shit that you're definitely not getting what are those snap peas like snow peas or something we got some carrots Cut up in little flowers and shit. Hopefully, we do got some onions chilling out down there. Like a couple of loose testicles hanging out on a hot day. Like, wow, nice presentation there and all that shit you won't be seeing. But yeah, the rest of the package is just kind of like blank empty space, isn't it? The the front is pretty pretty barren. I mean, what what were you thinking with this? Look at all that wasted space. Boy, even even the back of it is like pretty barren. We got the, the nutrition facts over there. Listed pretty small. Oh yeah, that's right. This one didn't have the cooking instructions on it, right? It's okay. We'll just we'll just look up the, the cooking instructions from the, the other JML because we still have that screenshot and, and they, they both look to be about the same. So we got uh, one serving in this container. We, we do appreciate that with the no fudging with the two serving bullshit there is 2181 milligrams of salt and here it says it that comprises 91 percent of your daily value could be could be quite a bit man i'm lucky i don't do these too often you know i'm lucky there's production involved because if i was just going at these like one after another i would be just dead that was like 10 years of my life between like 15 and 25 eating nothing but ramen holy shit man i'm lucky i'm lucky we're not keeled over yet anyway 91 percent of your daily sodium that's 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 pretty high but what are we going to give the packaging on this one uh, it doesn't give us the cook instructions like i'm not happy about that like not at all yeah, there is there's little pictures of what you're supposed to do, and I do see 500 milliliters, you know, there, in the um, in the language of whatever this this is um, posted in, written in. I mean, printed on. Oh, fuck, I, I don't know. We do have like all of the ingredients listed. Like, pretty nicely here. It's a strange contradiction there. Given a zero to this one. Don't know how to cook it. Uh, I think that's everything we need to know about the this ramen before we open it up. So, let's go crack her open and see how she flies. To the pot! Okay, we are back. 
And the soup cooking process was one that, yeah, I didn't, couldn't quite recall right off the bat, but it was put the noodles in the bowl, put the 500 milliliters of water in there, you let the noodles and the vegetables cook, then you add the seasoning packet and the oil packet. At first, I, I only pulled out two packets. I'm like, hmm, man, that's a modest showing. You know, I took a picture of those, and then I pulled the noodles out further, and then lo and behold, out came another pack. So that was kind of fun to see that we had three packs in there. What else do we have to say about this? We're really trying to cut back on the ums. So please give me shit in the comments if you <laughs> see me just peppering the videos with ums. <laughs> because I really want to knock myself of that habit. We have our toppings over here. We have the soup ready to go. Let's go ahead and get a little picture, everybody. There is a lot of stirring involved. We did have the, we did have the seasoning packet get kind of solid. So there was a bit of extra stirring involved after we tried to break up the packet a little bit. So you might not be able to see the, those beautiful vegetables the way that they've blossom down it but let's go ahead and get a picture of it the cooking time allowed for between three and five minutes with the water in there after you cover it I guess there's not much to say about it other than to just start the review although the smell is kind of weird I think I remember the noodles being kind of weird on this one were they kind of weird they might be one of those more like heavily wheat noodles because it does put off an aroma and I'm like, hmm, that aroma is the noodle. Well, without much further ado, let's just dig in. Let's get a nice big heap and help into these noodle. It was a more slender type of noodle. This is not the Korean style of noodle. It cooked in the bowl with the water that always shows that the noodle is going to be a softer one if it if it can just cook without being boiled in the water itself. I tend to like the ones that get boiled in the water though. Here we go. The noodle is definitely softer and I kind of like the flavor of it. Despite it being, like I said, one of the ones that is more flavored of wheat, I think I'm starting to like that a little bit more in my noodles. But do beware, this one has a little bit extra of an earthiness to it. And I, again, I don't know if it's the age that lends a little bit more of that earthiness, like a little bit of a cardboardiness to it, but I don't think so. We've had other older ramens that held out pretty nicely when it came to this sort of thing. And I'm just thinking that this is the way it's flavored, and, and I like it. I am A-OK -okay with this. If it means that I have to age my ramen like 10 years before I eat them and, and shit, well, so be it, because I kind of like this flavor. But this is what it was cooked at <clears throat> for about three minutes. If we left it in there another two minutes, these noodles would probably be mushy. Let's have one more go at it. Liking the noodle, and the balance of the broth is nice, despite it being a very salty ramen. Let's not kid ourselves, this is going to be really, really salty. And I'm pretty sure, like, I had some kind of a soup this morning. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going well over our sodium for the day if we finish this thing, so we probably won't. But I am going to try it with my toppings. We'll see how it is then. We might have to start giving that a rating, too. That's the sort of thing that we do in post, though. Oh, I'm not trying to make more fucking work for myself here. So, the noodles. I do like them. I do like them a lot. They are a little bit soft. That's okay. They remind me a lot of the, the kind of noodles that are in the cup of noodle kind of things. A little bit. They're rounder than that. And they have more flavor. So, I think the noodle on this one's pretty successful. I'm giving it a five. These are probably going to get pretty soft pretty quickly. I do like the flavor of them. Uh, the texture of them is pretty nice if you get to them right away. Otherwise, you know, I don't know, maybe we should go with a six. I forget what I give the other ones, but fuck it. Let's give them, 
Let's have, another, let's have one more bite. If these ones come out kind of mushy, then we're gonna give it a five. If they hold up, we'll give it them a six. We're starting to get kind of mushy. <laughs> we're giving them, a, giving them a five. Is this the texture that these noodles are supposed to be at this time? Could be. If that's the case, then they go soft kind of quickly, like a bad cereal. I would prefer that they have a little bit more texture a little bit further along. But they cook in the bowl, so I guess that's just kind of what you're working with when you have this this style of noodle. All right, let's get to the broth. There was one of those oil packets, like the sauce packets in this one as well. So it is kind of going to be a heavy sheen of oil on the top. We're going to try to get under that and have a, a little, a little tasty taste of the broth. I think I taste soy and garlic like right away and a little bit of that weird greasy like pepperoni uh, oil too like not enough to really make it spicy or anything but just enough to make it like mm, that's some kind of weird you know oil that was there from some kind of a greasy meat very salty very very salty Tastes rather simple. It's as though somebody doctored up one of the pork flavored Marishan ramens or something with nicer ingredients. I mean, that is the point of all this anyway. Like, I'm about to doctor this up with some nicer ingredients too. <clears throat> but in execution, it's, it's relatively simple, but altogether wholesome as well. Except that weird greasiness. Yeah. I like it, but I don't like it a ton. We're giving the broth a five. Again, this is something that's nice. And I would definitely have it again. It's just not really leaning in any direction. You know, aside from sort of the mundane flavors that are offered in ramen all the time. Uh, speaking of that, we picked up some Sapporo Ichiban, like the regular standard ass 79 cent Sapporo Ichiban. We're gonna be giving those a shot again to see if we really do still approve of them as much as we do in our heads because right now they're on a bit of a pedestal and we're, we're gonna be checking out their regular flavors pretty soon. But as for this guy, the JML, well, yeah, giving a five to the broth, five on the noodles, the price on this one, we're probably gonna have to default back to the price that we saw. We're giving this one two bonuses. It had the sauce packet and it had the veggie packet. Those are very nice. I think it's a, a, a good bit of effort to go into this soup. Yeah, I think that's about it, you guys. It's nice, it's okay. It, it really isn't going to win anybody over uh, that isn't already won over by the ramen that goes on sale like at Rayleigh's every day or whatever. But it will take a little extra effort in finding, I would imagine, I've never seen this one around. And it would also take a little bit of extra preparation it is nice that you can cook that water and take this on the go, but you still have to have your flatware and your bowl. So can't give it too many points for just being like something you can have ready uh, wherever you're, you're at. But a modest approval, at least a modest approval of this one. It's pretty good. It, it's not gonna turn you off. It, it's not particularly spicy in any direction. It's just kind of a nice little base to start something else with. And we're gonna have some tofu and some uh, uh, Naruto Maki and a little bit of green onion here. And we're gonna have a nice little party and make something out of this base. So here is my final ratings right now coming across the screen. We've been blathering on too long. We're gonna go ahead and eat this and uh, get started with the stream because that, that shit's going down here pretty soon. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Ramen Abyss, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. And an even bigger thanks goes out to the people still supporting me on Patreon. 
You guys are amazing and I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for continuing your support. It really motivates me to keep me going. Also, remember to catch me on Twitch every day except Tuesdays and Saturdays, 5 to 10 p.m. I play loads of Binding of Isaac and Jackbox and other things too. Hope to see you there. Oh, 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 oh,